Hey there guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at processing LRGB galaxies in PixInsight. Let's jump straight in and I'll take a view exactly what we're going to need if you want to follow along with this tutorial. You'll find in the description box down below a link to this particular folder, M106 LRGB tutorial hosted on my Google Drive. This contains all the data that I'm going to be processing in this tutorial. So if you want to follow along with me side by side using the exact same set of data, which I highly advise if you're just getting used to PixInsight, please do download that. It's completely free, of course, uh, and then you can work along with me. If you want to work on your own data, though, that's absolutely fine. But you will, of course, in all cases, need a few different tools installed into your PixInsight. So we're going to need Gradient Expert installed and integrated into PixInsight. There are a few tutorials online on how to do that. I have a video on my channel as well doing that. You'll need SPCC, that's Spectro Photometric Color Calibration, installed and ready to go on your PixInsight. Again, this is another totally free resource, but it's a great tool. It's worth the effort to set up. Again, tutorials online on how to do that. I won't bore you with it in this. Um, you'll need GHS, that's Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch, which is my favorite stretching method, bar none, at this point in time. Again, once uh, once you get that downloaded and installed, we should be just about ready to go, aside from a few final tools. So, this is going to contain some paid software, in my case, uh, the Exterminator tools from Russell Chrome, and that's Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator, and Noise Exterminator. I've used all these three tools extensively. I would not wish to process without them anymore. I'd sooner quit astronomy because they just bring me so much more enjoyment. It'd be like losing a hand at this point. So take from that what you will. I do have affiliate links to those down below. So if you wish to support my channel at no extra cost to yourself, then it would be massively, massively appreciated. And a huge thanks to those of you who already have done that. Now, with all that said, let's jump into this processing tutorial. And if you want to select the data, drag it all into PixInsight and just minimize the window that you just took it from. You should notice that all the data loads in along with the tools. If the tools are visible for you, you'll need to right click and click Arrange Icons and that should bring them all into view. And the first thing I want to do, get everything actually neatly arranged so i'm going to select the luminance window whichever window you have selected will appear in the top left when you click window and tile windows as you can see so i'm zooming out just using the mouse scroll wheel to make sure that the whole image is visible in all cases i will now open stf and in turn just by selecting each image and the little nuke icon on stf i'm going to go through and just do a screen stretch on all of these images so I can see exactly what's going on. And then we know what we can actually do with this image and what we need to tackle next. So the first thing that's really plainly wrong with this is there are huge stacking artifacts on these images. Now, these all need to be gone. So to do that, I'm going to use dynamic crop. Just double click that and drag from the corners until you've cropped out all of those stacking artifacts. If you wish to zoom in at this point and take a look and make sure that you know you're not getting any of this low signal to noise ratio kind of salt and peppery looking stuff on the side please do so but just make sure you've got all the stacking artifacts gone you can't really leave any in place as it throws off uh later tools um so once that's done don't go ahead and hit execute right away what you first need to do is use new instance and just drag and drop that onto your other three images. Once that's done, you can safely hit the tick and then all four images are cropped to the exact same common area. Our next step is going to be to combine these images. I used to leave this till a little bit later in my older tutorials, but these days I'm doing it straight away. Uh, so to do that, we're going to select first the luminous box and put the appropriate image in there. In the R, you guessed it, we want to put the red. In the G, we want the green, and in the B, we want the blue. Go ahead and apply globally. Okay, so that's finished just moments later. Go ahead and close down that LRGB combination tool. I am going to apply now an SDF, just a screen stretch to this linear data so we can take a look at exactly what we're working with. If you wish to minimize visual clutter, 
can go ahead and either minimize or close those other windows. So I'm just going to drag them off the screen. And I'm going to make this one main window a little bit bigger so we can really see what's happening. Right. Obviously, we've got some gradients to deal with in this thing. So at this point, you've got a decision to make. If you've got an up-to-date Pixinsight install, you could opt to use gradient correction, which can give fantastic results if you are willing to work with it and kind of, you know, input the exact parameters that you're going to need, which change with each image, uh, but it is doable. So that's the results with gradient correction and applied just at default. So I wouldn't expect you'd get great results from that, but it hasn't done bad. I'm right clicking and undoing because I am actually going to use myself scripts toolbox. And as I mentioned before, gradient expert, that's my general tool of choice. It doesn't work quite as well as gradient correction. If you take the time to dial gradient correction in, but if you're just going to use things at default, like I tend to do because I'm a little bit lazy. It generally works quite well. So Gradient Expert now is running. And in just a moment's time, we should have a finished image. There you can see it's brought us up a preview of the background model that it extracted from that. So all the main gradients appear to be gone. Close that down. We have a color cast introduced to the image, but we can just click reset on the STF right there. So apply a fresh one. And it's now back to looking normal. So uh, yeah, I think that's done a really good job. It looks to me like most of the gradients are gone. It is a very easy to use tool. So uh, as I say, there's no wrong answer to this, but if you are a little bit lazier like me, uh, or you just want an easier option, gradient expert. The next step anyway, is now gonna be opening up script and plate solving this image using image analysis and image solver. Now this was taken, um, M106 is the galaxy. So we're gonna search for M106 in here, hit search and select the appropriate database file. If you were processing a different galaxy, of course, you'd search for that. And if you have stacked up your data inside Pixinsight, most of this metadata should already be sorted for you. As, um, as it is, it seems to have put most things in for me. It may not for you. So if you do need to enter this information, this was taken with a 2.4 micron pixel camera. So you'd enter that right there. And if you need the focal distance, it's 642. It was taken with an Esprit 120 with a 0 0.77 times reducer and a 183 mm Pro. In case you wanted to know, go ahead, hit OK. Don't worry too much about the pop up. It's just letting us know that because we haven't specified the observation date, that some of the parallaxes may be slightly wrong. That's finished. As you can see, it's solved the image. We can now use SPCC. Now this image is solved. You could use this at complete defaults if you know a little bit more about what you've done. Uh, you know, you've taken the image with, you should select it. So the quantum efficiency curve is going to default to the ideal curve. However, I know that I took this with an IMX 183, so I am going to select it. The filters I used as well should be somewhere on here. Yeah, and sure enough, um, astronomic deep sky filters. So the deep sky red. Deep sky green and deep sky blue. You don't have to do this. You could have left those at default and you'd still get a great result. But again, as I said, I know what I took them with. So why not input them and get it as a little bit more accurate if I can. So that's now finished. You could choose to not have this graph pop up, but if you know a way to interpret it, maybe you do uh, wish to have it shown, but there it is. Generate graphs. Go ahead, reapply the SDF. And sure enough, the image is looking pretty well color calibrated right now. Uh, we can certainly work with this. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this tutorial, we're now going to start to use some uh, paid software in the note of Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and Star Exterminator. In my case, um, I do have affiliate links to these down below. Please don't think that that's um, going to kind of affect what I'm saying to you in any way. I was shouting the virtues of these tools long before I had affiliate links. Um, but if you do wish to use them, it would help me out at no extra cost to yourself. And a huge thanks to those of you who have used them, as I said before, makes a huge difference. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just apply at defaults on this. I'm not worrying too much about trying to dial everything in because I just find these tools, they kind of just work. 
There we are. Didn't take long at all, thanks to GPU acceleration. And uh, take a look at that. Wow. If I just cycle back and forth for you ever so quickly, look at the lane detail in that galaxy. All those dusty lanes are just popping up. This little nebulous region right at the top here that used to look a little bit like a kind of a smudge. Now it's clearly a little region of nebulosity. It's, it's incredible what Blur Exterminator can do. Um, it changed the game for me and just upped the amount of enjoyment I was having by a huge amount, really. So uh, give it a go. There's free trials for these things. Noise Exterminator. Uh, see what you think, you know what I mean? Now this comes on and its default denoise value is a little bit high, generally speaking, unless you have very noisy data. Uh, in my case, I'm going to drag it down just a touch. It's not an exact science. About 75, 0.75 rather. Let's try it at that. And what I'm really going to be looking for at this point is if it's just looking plasticized, you know, it's just too smooth. It actually looks good at 0.75, so I'm going to leave it alone and not worry about it anymore. But if it did look, you know, too smooth, you might want to just back that off a little bit and try again. It really doesn't take long, but here's the effect that uh, Noise Exterminator had. As you can see, all that background kind of color model noise that traditionally used to give me a rather massive headache <laughs> to deal with. It's all just gone in one movement. It's uh, It's incredible. At this point, if you wish, you could pull the stars out with Star Exterminator by using Generate Star Image and Unscreen Stars. I'm going to delay just a moment before doing that uh, because I want to give this in a preliminary stretch with GHS first. So I'm going to go ahead, reset the screen transfer function view, open up GHS, open up a preview. And with the background region selected, just left mouse button in a, a region that you know to be dark on the image. If you need to stretch the view again, you could, you know what I mean? And then select that said region. But just use that and click send to symmetry point. So that's send to SP. I'm going to go ahead and start to up the stretch factor until I can see things in the image. I'm not going to apply just yet. I'm going to open up a zoomed preview window by clicking the little icon just right there. And I'm going to drag a window just over the main object of interest in this, so M106 right there. At this point now I'm going to increase that stretch factor to the point where everything I want visible in, in the image is visible. But it's not like this, you know, it's not overbaked. So around about... Not worrying too much about highlights right now. Around right about there. I think it looks good for me. Uh, as you can see now, the highlights are overblown in the core of this galaxy. Don't worry just yet. I'm going to drag in a closer preview just to show you what I'm doing. Now using the local intensity slider, I'm going to drag that across to the right just a little until that core is no longer overblown. As you can see the effect this is having as I just cycle it back and forth for you. It's no longer overblown, but the galaxy remains It's how it should look. That kind of dynamic appearance of darker regions, brighter regions. If you go too far with local intensity, everything starts to flatten out and uh, you lose a lot of pop from your galaxy images. So do take your time with this. Don't worry about rushing this step because this is one of the most critical steps, I would say, in the whole thing. Good check i think is to just cycle back and forth preview off and on and you can see that bright core it's only just only just blowing out now so it looks about perfect to me about as much as we can possibly stretch for that first stretch so i've gone ahead hit apply now i'm going to hit reset next up as you can see, the histogram, if I just boost the size of this ever so slightly for you, so the histogram peak itself had been pushed way across to the right. So naturally, we've got a lot of grey values over here, which we're now going to get rid of by setting the black point freshly. So I'm going to use the transformation type as linear. Stretch this window up for you again. And I'm going to drag 
the left hand uh, side of the histogram right there just across steadily towards that peak's base so you don't want to cut into it and clip your blacks as that's just going to look ridiculous but you don't want to leave it back here as well because that also looks silly so what you really want to be looking out for is that you see this value right here low clip point lcp just clipping a few pixels it's absolutely fine there so i'm gonna leave it at that that's absolutely fine it looks good is the most important thing it looks good on the preview window right there gonna hit apply and now i think at this point i'm gonna pull out the stars before con continuing on just one more little stretch so star exterminator generate star image on screen stars apply Okay, now that's finished, I'm just going to move my stars across to one side, take this image once again, and with GHS, we're going to give it one last little stretch. So with a preview over M106 itself, I'm going to up the stretch factor ever so slightly. And this time I'm going to drag the local intensity. I just reset it, by the way. Just left. Of center so you can see I left it where it was I move it to the right we're gonna have trouble as I move it to the left it's gonna tame that stretch just enough to the point where we're now getting more of the galaxy visible but the background isn't massively suffering hopefully you can see the effect as I just cycle back and forth I like that next step I'm gonna leave it intact and I'm going to take one more stab now at setting the uh, the kind of black point. So once again, fresh preview. I, I apologize if this segment seems laborious. It kind of is a little bit, but it's worth the time, you know, taking a few moments to actually try and get this as well as you can set. Um, this is where you're going to make or break your image, really. So I'm going to allow a small amount of clipping there on the, the low values. It looks absolutely fine to me. Nothing dramatic is happening on the, the actual image itself. So I'm going to settle at that. Now, I am going to put the stars back in before I process any further. So to do that, I'm just going to use my own star rescreening tools. These should be included for you if you downloaded the data. If not, there are multiple other tools out there to do this with. Um, I'm not saying my tools are anything special. They really aren't. So I'm going to drag the starless over the starless image. Stars over the stars image and then rescreen over any of them and there you go we've now got a rescreened star result i'm just going to clear some of this visual clutter and we can finish off our processing so now i'm going to make use of masking uh, for the case of this you could use individual color masks if you wish uh, and i do advise that you play around with those but for this first mask I'm just going to use processors, mask generation, range selection, open a preview, select screening, and then dragging the lower limit over to the right. We're going to start to see what happens to this image. So you can see the, the kind of tipping point where the background is just starting to go. We want to take it a little bit further than that until just M106 and its extensions are encircled. The very brightest stars are encircled, that's absolutely fine. And any other notable regions uh, have been preserved within this mask. I'm going to boost the smoothness just enough to the point where if you note some of these smaller stars, you're going to start to just be lost into the background. It's absolutely fine. You've got a wide range of acceptable values on this. You know, this is acceptable, this is acceptable, this is acceptable, this is not kind of thing so uh, hopefully it's just a decent visual representation for you go ahead and apply close everything down and now we're going to take this mask drop it on our image just over there right below the uh, identifier and now with curves in my case that's what i'm going to use for this and a preview window and saturation selected i'm going to start to boost the color in this image just a little bit so I appreciate this is probably quite hard to see so i'm going to zoom right in once again on m106 
Hopefully you can now see. And by bringing up the middle of that saturation curve, up towards the top left, it's going to start to add some colour into this image. All the colour values are now being boosted. So before and after, it's a kind of a subtle stretch, but don't be afraid to take this in steps. You don't need to do it all in, you know, one gigantic leap first time. Take your time. Now, a little bit more. It's starting to appear now that we can see um, these nebulous regions are popping out from the rest of the image as actual red as they should. They are predominantly hydrogen alpha. And with perhaps one more stretch in the bag, let's see if it can take that. If I just reset the tool. So that's how it currently looks. I think we can go a little bit more. That's starting to look pretty good to me. Do take your time, as I say. Don't don't really uh, rush this segment, as you could, you know, go way too far. Let's say like that, and how things start to to look a little bit cartoonish and drawn as such. But up there is perfectly acceptable. It's just kind of what's what's there, if you will. So I'm going to apply that, and I'm going to settle at that. As you notice, because our mask included those brighter stars. They've also been boosted in saturation too, and it's led to a really pleasing appearance for this. I think this processing method leads to quite a natural looking galaxy, which I really like. Um, I know some people love to process the galaxies to the absolute max. Nothing wrong with that. If that makes you happy, you know, that's what you need to do. But for me, I like a nice natural looking galaxy, and I think that is that is what I've achieved with this now. In my case, for this particular set of data, there is a little bit of green cast over the image, uh, probably remnant light pollution, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to attempt to remove it with SCNR, and that's done a pretty good job. Probably a little bit strong, so you could go ahead and actually change the amount of SCNR. I'm going to use it about half strength. That looks more satisfying to me. And my uh, non-color calibrated eyeballs, but it looks good on my monitor and that's all that really matters. So hopefully this has given you guys enough that you could follow along with uh, this kind of thing and get a decent result from this data and then moving on to your own. There's plenty more of this kind of thing to come. I hope you've enjoyed this processing tutorial and I'd just like to say as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you all for your support. Uh, everybody on Patreon, YouTube memberships, you guys are absolutely fantastic. And all the people using my affiliate links too. Uh, you all help to keep me afloat every month. And I really do appreciate you. So uh, as always, anyway, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Close guys.